relationship in many ways, very, very positive. And um, just being aware that um, when you look at a kid, you're looking at someone with a future. You're looking at someone that has a real chance of maybe achieving their dreams, whether it's the, to study what they want to study, working what they want to work at, um, and in this world, it's just, uh, yeah, uh, well, there are many problems, I think that in a society, no, but like, no, right, people have the ability to logically yeah. over a long period of time systematically move toward a constant, toward a more progressive direction to solve some of the problems. We're living in a world where I mean, things for the majority of people all over the world are and people can't help by that. People can't escape living in this world, being in this world. And so Cuba has had to really try to survive and flourish and build in a very hostile world. And the world keeps getting more hostile, but I think that what is deadly in other places just a difficulty. I mean, you don't see people dead on the streets. You don't see the tremendous amount of violence, the tremendous amount of just naked human suffering that you see in so many other places. And so it's different in that sense. You don't see the body, you don't see the blood. You don't see the victims just falling down left and right. And do your thing. All I want to do is okay. um, get into it. So I was just asking you, um, I was just asking you about when I asked you before about some of the things that you were struggling for in the United States. Um, do you see any of those things being here? Do you feel at all like maybe in some way you sort of achieved some of those, I mean not achieved some of those things, but maybe some of those things have come true at least in one part of the world? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's so many good things about what the revolution has been able to as I was telling you, I think that one of the most moving things for me at least is the children. Is to see children in the future. Is to see children who are true to the children. Who don't have to worry about living in a society with violence from morning to night. You don't have to worry about going to school and getting stabbed. You don't have to worry about um, just a constant barrage of violence, of hostility. So it's, it's very encouraging just to see children who really believe that uh, they can accomplish their dreams. They really believe that if they want to study to be a carpenter or a doctor or or whatever, it's within their access, it's within their reach. Um, uh, it is the first time in my life that I have ever been in a society that is not the first time. I have my whole entire life that I lived in a society that was totally hostile to, me, to my people. Uh, all the press people, and obviously that affected me, that shaped my life, shaped my way of thinking. And when I came here, the first time I went like to the plaza, for example, I heard Fidel Fogg. So my God, this is the first time that I've ever been in a country and uh, a, a president has said something that I right on. I agree. I agree with what they're saying. And that was an incredible experience for me because I've always 
been in a country where the president was always some product of IBM and Gulf Oil and Mobile and whoever, and was always a tool of other people that were rich and white and powerful, but that president has never had any meaning to me, has never said anything harder that I've ever agreed with. It's always been a hostile force talking rubbish. So Cuba has been a different experience in, in that sense. Um, being in Cuba has also been beautiful in that sense of internationalism. You know, you can go in someone's house and they'll show you a picture of when they were in Angola or when they were teaching in Nicaragua or, you know, I mean, it's been very beautiful in that sense. I remember the only time I've ever seen Mandela, just seen him in life, was here in Cuba and Mandela was so clear about what Cuban internationalism has meant to the people of South Africa, to the people of Namibia, to the people of Angola. And, I mean, he carried that love for Cuba so much in his heart, in his being, that you could see that it was something like so tangible that you could touch it. So, that's another aspect of Cuba, you know, that I've I've learned to love and that has helped me not only to be relaxed but to be able to develop my own sense of internationalism, to sharpen my own ability to feel what other people feel, to support, to be enthusiastic about other people's struggles, to be incensed about the indignities that are perpetuated against people because they struggle. Those things I've learned to feel more intensely here in Cuba. And it's been a good thing. And uh, I think that another aspect of living in Cuba, I've learned what the third world is about. I've learned what goes on in the third world in a way which I would have, would have been difficult for me to feel in the United States because you take so many things for granted there. You have a feeling of, you know, everything is that you can go into a store and buy it. And then you come to Cuba and you see the people in the third world have to build step by step by step the whole time that they're dealing with an international economy, an international military structure that is hostile to their development, hostile to their growth, hostile to their survival, and the things that just the water. You know, it, it didn't dawn on me really in, in the sense of, until I came to Cuba, that there are people who walk miles every day just to get a bucket of water, that there are people who uh, have no access whatsoever to electricity. To, you know, I mean, these things became real. When I, I came to Cuba, I said, my goodness, this is the first time I'm in an undeveloped country, and yet, yet I met people from other places who to them Cuba was the most developed place in the world and who appreciated every single aspect of life in the hospital. You know, people who, who brought their children here for, for operations who had never been in a hospital. Who never had been you know, so you see the great gains that the revolution has been able to make and has been able to make in spite of the most intense kind of uh, attack by the United States, by uh, other European powers, and that only by the sheer will, the sheer commitment to struggle have Cuban people been able to survive.